if you're gonna send somebody a picture of yourself and you want them to think that you're like so attractive, make sure your hair is wet in the picture. Sounds crazy, like it would have the opposite effect, but several studies have shown that we rate people with wet hair as more attractive. We don't even know why. Isn't this sexy? My sense of self-confidence is skyrocketing. Okay, so a couple signs a guy's attracted to you is when he's talking to you, he's gonna touch his chin, his beard, whatever, because it brings attention to his face. When he's listening to you, he's also gonna have his lips, like, slightly parted, smiling, hopefully. He's also gonna do these, like, half blinks because he's really focusing in on what he's looking at, and his nostrils might even, like, flare a little bit. And you're gonna notice that his shoulder, like, one of them's gonna drop down towards you. Some signs a girl likes you is she's gonna try and steal glances, hold eye contact for a sec, and then look away. And, like, looking away or up is eh, but looking down is really good. She also is gonna have a really irregular blinking pattern. She's just gonna be blinking like crazy. She might even touch her jewelry or her hair because it's a soothing behavior, but it also brings attention to the face. And when she's listening to you or looking at you, she might raise her eyebrows a little bit. And it's a really good sign if when she's talking to you, she has her head turned a little bit. Okay, so according to the FBI, if you can solve this mystery, you should consider signing up for their like little mystery solving club. So a man and a woman go to lunch together, but because it's hot outside, they order like four ice waters. The woman just sips on her drink throughout the meal while the guy chugs like three of them right at the beginning. When they go home, the woman ends up falling ill and then dropping dead before morning. The next day, the doctors run some tests on the man and come to the conclusion that somebody poisoned their drinks. But why is it that the woman died, but the man is still alive? Let me know what you think in the comments. The best foods you need to be eating next time you get sick. Garlic has been shown to reduce the severity of cold and flu symptoms, and if eaten regularly, it can decrease the number of sick days you overall have. Just make sure you eat it raw. Speaking of raw, honey has so many antibacterial properties, and it's the best way to soothe a sore throat. Same thing with lemons, okay? These things are also packed with vitamin C. Just Onions are also a great way to clear out your sinuses. You don't even necessarily have to eat it. You just have to cut it up. Watch the magic work. But by far, the best thing to eat when you're sick, some spicy food. I get chilies. This is like the hottest that I can handle. But like, <gasps> just, just do it. Hey, how did you get that bruise? I have no clue. Oh, just put this on it. A banana peel? Yes. Hold that on there for about half an hour and the bruise should look better, if not be completely gone. You should try brushing your teeth with your other hand. Why? Well, you'll reach parts of your teeth that you weren't cleaning before, and you're forcing your brain to work differently. Well, this is definitely harder. Why are you just eating peppers? I'm trying to lose weight. What? Yeah, spice tricks your taste buds into being more satisfied with smaller amounts. Okay, even if like 99% of the world's population thought you were ugly as shit, that still leaves over 75 million people that think you're pretty attractive. The word dreamt is the only word in the English language that ends with MT. Mint. The calcium in your bones and the iron in your blood came from the explosions of ancient giant stars. Like, I don't know if the picture they just took is quote unquote old enough, but we essentially come from this. This is like a baby photo of us. Here's some really weird human body facts that I can guarantee you didn't know. Your stomach has more brain cells than a cat has in its whole brain. Like you have a whole complex nervous system down there that has its own memory, reflexes, and senses. Your tongue knows exactly what everything feels like without having to lick it. Like my watch or a mirror or this tampon. You can feel this in your mouth right now, whether you want to or not. When a person gives birth, all the hormones in their body make their memory a little bit hazy. They legitimately forget how awful that was, but your brain does this on purpose to make you do it again. Things that aren't illegal, but are creepy as hell. Celebrity 18th birthday countdowns. It's almost exclusively done to girls. Most recent of which was Millie Bobby Brown, but I can promise you it's been going on for a very long time. Sexist baby clothes. They always have some weird demeaning or awkward saying on them. Like, why are you putting this on your kid? And the costumes are always a little fucked up. Like, why does the boy get to be a doctor and the girl have to be a beauty salon person? And to add on to something like this, 
prom pictures where the dad is just holding a gun. Big tough guy threatening a teenager. Why are we letting men do this? And to take it a step further, what about purity balls? It's when daughters are forced to pledge their virginity to their fathers. What? If you have a jar that is stuck, okay? I've given you guys a lot of different hacks to try and get this off, but if none of them seem to work for whatever reason, you can take a bottle opener, pop it off. A razor is gonna last like five to seven shaves before the blades get dull and you need to replace it. But you can make it last like five times longer by just making sure you wipe out any of the hair that's in it and then having it soak in baby oil. If you have a visible hickey, first of all, smack the shit out of whoever did that to you. We're not in middle school anymore, unless you are, then whatever. But if you don't want somebody to see this hickey, take a whisk and swirl it around on your skin for about five to 10 minutes. It's gonna break up all the blood that's stuck there on the surface and the bruise will go away. They made a Cards Against Humanity filter. Like that game is so offensive. Why would anybody do Oh, that's a lot of options. Now I gotta Google that word? Fuck. <sighs> no! 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 I have always despised the whole glass half empty, glass half full debate because there's a clear answer here and it's about initial conditions. This glass is empty. This glass is full. Full, half empty. Anybody who argues otherwise isn't paying attention, and this isn't about water. It turns out that you didn't just grow up and acquire a newfound taste and fondness for Brussels sprouts. It wasn't just that your mom was cooking them wrong. Since the 90s, breeders have been cross-pollinating different variations of Brussels sprouts to get rid of a specific chemical that makes them bitter. Meaning that the Brussels sprouts that we have today taste completely different than the ones that we had just 20, 30 years ago. Like when you were a kid and you didn't like Brussels sprouts, that was valid. We've changed them. If you're somebody who's still in school, you need, need to know these hacks. If you ever have to research something that's kind of complex, just delete this en dot and type in simple dot and Wikipedia will dumb it down for you. And if reading in that format ever just gets too difficult, you can always type in the subject you need to learn about, followed by file type colon PPT, and a bunch of different PowerPoint presentations on the subject are gonna pop up. I swear to God, if I ever see any one of you spending money on a textbook, I will crawl through this screen and beat your ass. Type in the name of the book your teacher's trying to get you to buy, followed by file type colon PDF, and the whole textbook will just appear for free. If you're feeling like you hate yourself, Take a shower. If you're feeling like you hate everyone, try eating something. If you feel like everyone hates you, get some sleep. And if you're feeling like everyone hates everyone, put down the phone and go outside. Next time you go to shake somebody's hand, instead of doing the traditional up and down, try going left and right. It never gets old watching their faces. You guys just go in a circle. I learned this one from a friend who works at a restaurant, but whenever you're out to eat with like a group of people, make sure you only ask questions to the person that's still chewing. Whenever you go over to somebody's house for like a party or something, make sure you bring some sort of object to leave there. It could be a tiny plant, maybe a TV remote you don't use anymore, some sort of weird statue, just anything that they would find and be like, what? If your dog ever gets out of the house and starts running away, instead of chasing it, you should run in the opposite direction to get them to chase you instead. Dogs don't understand the concept of a mistake. So if you ever accidentally like step on their paw, they just think you did it on purpose. Hello. If your dog ever initiates contact with you by like resting their head on you, placing their paw on you, bumping into you, it's a sign that they love you and they're happy. And I really do think more dog owners should read up about dog body language because like yawning doesn't mean they're tired. It's an anxiety sign. Same thing if you like start petting them and they lick their lips. They don't want to be pet or if they shake, they're stressed out. When dogs start going deaf, they don't understand that they can't hear anymore. They just think you stopped talking to them. So when I was in college, I lived in an apartment complex that had one of these like communal laundry rooms where you had to pay like 50 cents to a dollar to use the washing machine and dryer. And 
I didn't want to do that. So I looked up the unit's model number and bought a lockbox key and saved hundreds of dollars doing laundry. I also never bought any of the textbooks. What am I going to do with it after the class? Read it? Mm -mm. Okay, either find a free PDF of it online, use somebody else's book, or if you absolutely have to buy it, don't buy it from the school bookstore, you're just asking to be robbed. Use a website like Slugbooks to compare the best prices. Another thing I did in college was right before an exam, I would send out a mass email to the class being like, hey, I just finished my study guide. Send me yours and I'll send you mine. Never actually made a study guide, but I ended up with everybody's, would send them back to everybody and we all get good grades. Here's some things we all know that are wrong. Twinkies don't last forever. They're primarily flour and sugar, so they have a 45 day shelf life. Feeding rice to pigeons is not gonna make them explode. They don't have enough moisture in their bodies or produce enough heat for this to happen. Dogs don't sweat by panting. They do this to cool down, but they're mammals. They have sweat glands and they mostly sweat through their paws. The United States is not a democracy in the sense that the people vote for laws. Instead, the people vote for other people that vote for laws, which is why we're ranked number 17 out of all the countries in terms of freedom. Humans have more than five senses, like a lot more. There's a bunch of scientific terms for it, but there's the sense of hunger, thirst, balance, pain, mental distress, the sense of self. That feels pretty human. My brother handed me a drink and he wants me to drink it. But before I do, I just want to like show you guys what this is so the reaction makes sense. I get ice. Ice. Red raspberry syrup. Oh. I can't add dry. Something that tastes like Sprite. Ginger ale tastes like Sprite? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can use half and half, half or milk. So, milk in the soda? Yeah. Yeah. So, but half and half. Y'all are too excited about this. Okay. Then you put in. Look, Oh. It's the dentist special. <laughs> Sweet. Then. Sit and drink it. Why is that good? Enjoy. Tickle me shocked. Here's a psychology trick that I know works because I use it. Okay, you really got to be careful with this one because the truth can hurt. But if you want to see if somebody secretly dislikes you, like they're nice to your face, but you have a sneaky suspicion they're talking shit about you behind your back, say something to them that can be perceived as superficially polite or subtly an insult. Like, hey, you look nice today. Somebody that's your friend is just gonna take the compliment, but somebody that doesn't like you is gonna see the negative and get offended. Here are some things that airports don't tell you, but they probably should. Over 70% of crashes are survivable, but the reason they say that most people don't is because they don't dress to egress, meaning closed-toed shoes and non-synthetic clothing to be able to survive while waiting for rescue. You should drink a lot of water before getting on the plane because it's pressurized at a higher altitude than sea level, which is going to make you dehydrated, which yes, means alcohol will affect you more. If you forget your phone charger, don't buy one at the airport, they're overpriced. Instead, ask somebody at the check-in counter. They usually have this big box of extras and they'll give you one if you're nice about it. The little church inside of an airport is a great place to get some sleep. Yes, the plane gives you the option to recline your seat back about a half an inch and it is totally within your right to use it. You know, get comfortable, but it is the quickest way to make sure that the person sitting behind you is your arch nemesis for life. Here's some toys from your childhood that got banned. The Harry Potter Nimbus 2000 broomstick was an all too magical piece of plastic that vibrated to simulate flying. Some of the actual reviews read, I'm surprised how long my daughter can just sit in her room riding this broomstick. The only problem my son has with this is how quickly the batteries run out. Even my 17 year old daughter likes this thing. After Toys R Us took these off the shelves, a lot of sex shops started selling them. Colossal water balls. They're like Orbeez, but bigger. These things looked and felt like candy, so it's no surprise that kids just started eating them. When they went to the hospital due to dehydration, doctors couldn't see these things on x-rays, so they had to go through surgery and a lot of kids died. The Hannah Montana Pop Star Card Game. This game, and many other Hannah Montana merchandise were recalled due to the fact that they were covered in lead, about 75% more than the recommended safety level. Here's some toys from your childhood that got banned. 
Barbie and Oreo did a little collaboration and made the Oreo Barbie. The black version of this Barbie was very quickly pulled off of shelves after people started pointing out that Oreo is a derogatory term. So not very many of these Barbies were made and because of this, people have started selling them on eBay for as much as $300. The inflatable baby boat. Aqualeisure got recalled because this product, which is designed to keep babies from drowning, ended up drowning some babies because it was really easy for them to just fall through the leg straps. Which is why a lot of the marketing for it nowadays shows the parent holding on to the child anyway. Razor scooters didn't get banned, but they probably should have. In 2001 alone, it sent over 110,000 kids to the hospital. In a decade, over 3.2 million. It's crazy to think that their next step was to add sparks and a motor to this thing, because that's a good idea. Asked, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Here are a list of common black market items and how much fuck, how much they all cost. Breast milk typically goes for like one dollar an ounce. A stolen social media account goes for about two dollars each, but obviously will go up depending on how many followers it has. A vial of holy water is about thirty dollars, which is really weird to think about because it's like just buy normal water and bless it. A wig made out of real human hair is about sixty dollars, which feels like they're undercharging for that. You can get a fake passport for $90, but I don't know how well that's going to work out for you. You can get a fake ID for 120 but I know a guy that'll do it for half that. A vial of sperm's going to take you out about $400, but I know a couple guys that'll do that for free. It didn't specify what kind of organs people are buying for this price, but it starts at $3,000. They say if you want to buy a living human, it's going to be about $8 million. The corpse of a celebrity is about $45 million, but who's providing that? Who's... The best way to find cheap or even free things online is to go to Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace and look up divorce, death, new baby. You're gonna get the best deal because these are the people that are most eager to get rid of the thing that they're advertising. When you go to book a hotel, you can put your prefix as doctor, even if you're not a doctor, most of the time they're going to give you a better room option than they would have in the first place. You can almost always reduce the price of your Wi-Fi, TV, phone, sometimes even insurance just by calling them and being like, Hey, I don't really like the service. I want to cancel and I'm going to be leaving for competitor's name here. These companies do not want to lose your business, but they really don't want to lose it to the people that they're competing against. So because of this, they're going to somehow magically find a way to lower your bill. I learned something from my therapist today that I really wish I would have known sooner. So I'm gonna tell you because I think the whole world would benefit from this knowledge. If a child feels a lack of love from their father, they're going to have low self-esteem and an emotional imbalance and constantly looking for love wherever they can find it. And if a child feels a lack of love from their mother, they're going to have anger, communication, and trust issues. And if a child feels a lack of love from both of the parents, they're gonna have all of those symptoms, plus the added feeling of confusion and feeling unlovable until they get their shit figured out. If you're planning on traveling abroad, never do these things. Go into anywhere in the Caribbean, don't wear camo. It's illegal for civilians to do so. If you're traveling to Greece, don't pack your high heels because you won't be allowed at any of the ancient sites because your shoes could damage it. In American culture, not tipping makes you an asshole. But in Japan, tipping makes you the asshole. Just don't do it. They're not gonna accept it. It's gonna be really awkward. If you're grabbing a bite to eat in China, make sure you don't finish all the food on your plate, okay? In our culture, it's a sign of like, oh, the food is really good. But in theirs, it's a sign of like, oh, I didn't give you enough food to eat and it can be considered rude. In India, make sure you're careful about which hand you're using because your right hand is used for eating food, greeting other people, but your left hand is used for wiping your ass or cleaning your feet. And it can be very insulting if you mix the two. When I was 18, I was so desperate to move out of my foster house that I went on Craigslist and looked for a new place to live, and I found this dude who really wasn't that weird. Like, the only thing was that he was a part-time shrimp farmer, which I looked past and moved in with him, honestly, like, one of my best roommates, until the day that I came home from a long day of classes, about to go get ready for work, and the front door is just wide open. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I call his name, no answer. We didn't live in a good area, and I was like, shit, like, somebody broke in. So I pull out my pepper spray, and I slowly, like, walk into the house, and I peer into the living room. There were 25 cats just sitting there looking at me, and I'm looking at them, and they're looking at me, and I kind of, like, move, and they'll scatter, just run out of the house. I lock the door. I'm just like, what the fuck? I'm about to call him, and I hear, like, a, like, bang on the front door, and so I open it, and it's just this girl 
with boxes. And she's like, why did you shut the door? What do you, what do you mean, why did I shut the door? There was an army of cats in here. And she's like, well, I'm moving in. What? I'm your, I'm your roommate's girlfriend. I'm moving in. He didn't tell me you were moving in. I don't know if I should let you in. But I did, and that was like such a weird, weird fucking day. But not as weird as the day like a week later when she comes up, the new roommate girl knocks on my door at like 1.30 in the morning and asks me for a threesome. But that's a story for another time. I just got a very large box from TikTok, and I have no idea what it is, but... I'm excited. It's a countdown little advent calendar to 2023. Ah! It's literally November 21st. I can't even open uh, the first one yet, but I'll see you in a sec. All right, day one. What do we got? Is it a spoon? <laughs> day two. The little, the little like TikTok stickers. <laughs> Day three is a headband. <laughs> Four. It's an air freshener, and it smells like Christmas. Day number five. Ah oh, yeah, it's a little TikTok like makeup bag. Day six is a. Uh, Little keychain koozie. Day seven is kind of large. It's a little TikTok coaster. Oh, huh? TikTok countdown week one is done. I really want to open up the rest of them right now, but I think I'm going to have a little bit more self control and give you guys a part two next week. So, yeah. Thank you, TikTok. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Nah. Here are some toys from your childhood that got banned for being too dangerous. Aqua dots was something I saw on TV all the time, okay? There were these little beads, and if you sprayed them with water, they would, like, stick together. The issue was that these little beads were coated in a chemical compound called GHB, aka the date rape drug. Kids would accidentally ingest these beads and then just pass the fuck out. Rollerblade Barbie, just one of the many Barbies from the Career and Hobbies collection. The little rollerblades they gave Barbie had a spark mechanism which essentially was just a cigarette lighter that they gave to children. If you rolled Barbie over anything flammable, you had a problem. In 1993, Slip and Slide had to recall over 9 million of their slides due to the fact that they were made for children, but adults were using them. The slides just weren't long enough and over a dozen people ended up getting spinal cord injuries that ended up in permanent paralysis. If you regularly have to leave your house like for work or something, okay, leave treats around before you go. That way your cat isn't anxious for you to leave. They're more excited for the little treasure hunt. Cats love boxes because it makes them feel safe. They have this idea that they can see everything, but nobody can see them. Even if that box isn't real. Cat hierarchy is simple. If they regularly place themselves above you, they think they're in charge. You should really read up on cat body language because their way of showing affection or anxiety is completely different than other pets. So like if they need on you or rub their faces on you, that's their way of showing affection. Or if they like slow blink at you while maintaining eye contact, that's their way of giving you a kiss. And if you do it back, they might just do it again. Raisin just... Cats don't see the person that feeds them as their owner. They just see them as the feeder. So if you want your cat to see you as the owner, you have to train them. The issue is, humans can be trained just as easily, and the cat usually wins. Did you know that the color of your bed sheets can actually make or break the quality of sleep that you're getting? Some of the worst colors you can put in your bedroom are red because it's a danger signal, it brings out a lot of energy, purple because of its intensity and making people want to be creative, and brown because it's kind of gloomy and isolating. Some middle of the ground colors would be orange because it's kind of like brown but more bright and exciting. Black can be okay if you do it right, but it can also bring up a lot of negative emotions like fear, anger, and sadness. Same thing with white. In a hotel it can be really nice, but in your own home it can come off as really harsh and sterile and kind of uninviting. Beige is a good trade-off because it's still simple but gives off a little bit more peace and warmth. But by far the best colors you can put into your room to improve your sleep would be a light pink because it's known to be gentle and improve your mood, green because it's a very natural tranquil color, you know, organic vibes, and blue is regarded as the number one best color for sleep. I'm getting very calm, stable, trustworthy feelings from these sheets. After reading all that, my insomnia is making 
a whole lot of sense. Here's some really weird ancient games that our ancestors used to play. Not mine, but somebody's. Rich Victorians had this one called Find the Poo. Where somebody was designated to take a shit, hide it in like a vase or something, and put that vase somewhere in the house for the rest of the party to find. Classic. Ancient Greek women used to play this game called Listestrata, where they would collectively withhold sex from men, most notably with powerful men during times of war. And they would do so until peace negotiations would happen. A little game of power where a sex strike literally saved lives. So King Philip V of Spain invented this game called the Imperturbable that became really popular in 18th century France. A bunch of men would sit at a table but be completely naked from the bottom down. A woman would go underneath the table and go down on one of the men. And the object of the game was to guess who was getting off and you won if you could finish without anybody noticing. Here are some of my favorite psychology tricks that I know work because I use them. If somebody's feet are pointed towards you in a conversation, that means that they're interested and content in the conversation. But if they're pointed away, not so much. And you can use this in a big group to tell who likes who. If you're talking to somebody who's known to lie and manipulate, you can get them to not do that to you by instead of making eye contact, just stare at their forehead slightly above their eye line. This is gonna make them uncomfortable and subconsciously intimidated. If somebody is just being an asshole to you, try to remain calm and silent for at least four to five seconds before responding because their brain is gonna perceive that silence as rejection and they're gonna dig themselves into a deeper hole by being unnecessarily upset. If you're playing games or a sport against somebody, ask them how they're playing so well. This is gonna get them to think about it, out of their flow zone, and they're gonna play worse. One way to get somebody to like you is to get them to do small favors for you. And the easiest way to do that is by adding real quick to the end of the question, like, hey, can you kiss me really quick? I feel like most people only know or only really talk about major depressive symptoms and not anything else around it. So here are some signs of high functioning depression. This usually occurs in people who have been dealing with depression for a really long time, which is why it's known as persistent depression disorder. They overthink everything. They overthink overthinking. They are so concerned with time. They'll never miss a deadline. They'll get all their stuff done, but still feel like they're wasting their time and that their energy is being spent in the wrong place. And because of that, they don't ever feel like they're accomplishing anything. So they have this really strong self-critic that is just constantly giving negative feedback. And because of that, they probably have some unhealthy coping skills and excessive pastimes like eating too much, watching too much TV, or doing drugs. And because it's depression and that does weird things to people's brains, they'll feel sad while doing something fun. They know they're not happy, but they might not even realize that they're depressed because they don't know that this is what depression can also look like. ADHD hacks that I wish I knew sooner. Yeah, thanks for inviting me over. Uh, what do you want to do? Oh, I invited you over to be my body double for the day. What? Well, I was hoping that you kind of just sit there while I got some stuff done. So you just want me to sit here while you do stuff? Not help or anything? No, okay, just you being here is gonna help me out a lot, but you can help yourself to anything in the fridge. Why are all your condiments in the vegetable drawer, but your vegetables are in the condiment? Like, what are you, what are you doing? Well, if the vegetables were in the drawer, then it'd kind of turn into like a out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, and I would never use them. Kinda makes sense, but it also kinda feels like a sin. I'm telling you, it works for me. Hey, don't put that down. What? Put it away. Oh, don't put it down. Put it away. Don't put it down. Put it away. Don't put it down. Put it away. I'm invited to a couple of events next month that are like fancy, like really, really fancy. So I had to go and buy a new suit. This is one of the ones that I ordered that looks super fucking cool, like this purple velvety color. This is blue. I'm about to fix this shit or completely ruin it. Just gonna fill a bucket up with hot water. So just add a little bit of liquid dish soap and then like a lot of salt. Wish me luck. I, I got gloves on and I'm just gonna add the whole bottle. Just, I really want this to work. All right, now the, now the scary part. <laughs> I'm just gonna put the suit in the fucking bag. Ah, ah, okay. Oh god, oh god, please fucking work. Please work, I beg of you. Oh fuck, it's in, it's in. The suit is in the fucking bag. So the suit keeps wanting to float to the top, 
So I'm gonna have to sit here for like the next 15 minutes holding it down. <laughs> Rounding the shit! Okay, it's also saying to add like a tablespoon of some citrus acid. So we're just gonna pour that in. This is a good sign, right? Well, that did not work at all. At all. I'm gonna have to go order a new fucking suit. Okay, here's round two of trying to dye this blue suit purple. Hot water in the bucket. A purple dye packet into the water of bucket. Bucket of water? Shit. I'm gonna add this chemical that's like a intensifier. Oh my god, please. Please turn that into that. That, that, did you dip it? <laughs> oh god. Oh. Oh, I forgot to wear gloves. It says to leave it in here for like an hour, but stirring frequently. So, wish me luck. It's been a few days of me just like repeating that process a few times, but it worked and I, I want to give you the full experience. So just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go put it on. Look how good it turned out. Like this is purple. This is the color that I wanted. I'm going to um, the magic castle right now, feeling like a little prince. Also, the pants are leather. Uh, uh, yeah. Did you just bite my suit, boy? Why are you growling at me? Anyway, it worked. Purple suit. Everyone experiences and perceives love differently. But similarly enough that we've been able to categorize six different love styles. Eros is passionate love, and when we think of most, when we think of a romantic relationship, these people tend to fall head over heels and just love being in love. Mania is obsessive love. People with this love style tend to come off as obsessive and codependent, and depending on how well their partner is fulfilling their needs, they can feel very high highs or very low lows. Ludus is game playing love. These people tend to be a little bit more emotionally distant because they don't want to be more attracted to a person than that person is to them, so they end up exploring all the romantic prospects at the same time, pragma is practical love. These people prioritize compatibility over chemistry and they're constantly reassessing their relationship in their own mind because they want to make sure this person checks off all their boxes. Storge is platonic love. These people tend to fall in love with those they already have a friendship with because they value that level of trust that's been already built. Gape is selfless love. These people love unconditionally and tend to prioritize their partner's happiness because it makes them happy. You know, you always hear like, ah, GMOs, they're bad for you, but like, have you seen what our food was before we genetically modified it? Look at something like corn, for example, okay? I love corn. On the cob, off the cob, popped, a little bit of butter, throw some mayonnaise on that, mm, so fucking good. This is what corn looked like before humans got to it. It's laughable. What about avocados? Okay, we eat that shit on everything. Toast, eggs, burritos. Mm -hmm. Avocados used to be smaller with a larger pit and somehow rotted faster. I don't think bananas are all that appetizing to begin with, but I'll take this any day over what bananas used to be. How do you eat that? This watermelon looks delicious. Old watermelon makes me want to cry. I don't think we appreciate the carrots that we have because they used to be this. Would you rather eat that? No? Okay. Genetically modified foods are fine. Whenever you're trying to fit something inside of a Ziploc bag, but it's too big for it, you can always just take a second inside out Ziploc bag and it'll snap together. If you don't have an iron, you can always throw your clothes back in the dryer with a couple of ice cubes to get the wrinkles out. If you have one of these candles with multiple wicks, stop trying to light each of the wicks with the lighter, okay? I know for a fact you're burning your thumb and you look ridiculous. Instead, just try lighting one of them and let gravity do the rest of the work for you. <laughs> this is the best and healthiest pasta that I know how to make, and it's literally so goddamn easy. Instant Pot makes it easier. An extra virgin olive oil. You're gonna do half a chopped onion. Throw in some garlic. Get any kind of sausage you like. Do this thing where I stack it all up. So it's not like that. So I'm gonna wanna chop up a jalapeno and throw it in there as well. Don't forget to stir this shit. I don't wanna have to like wash a spoon too, so. Now add four cups of water. Do half a can of diced tomatoes and then half a can of sun-dried tomatoes. Can't forget the spices. People will make fun of you if you forget the spices. Then you just add the pasta. Add some spinach. Close the lid. Pressure cook for about 10 minutes. Oh my god, guys. This is so good. I'll literally eat this whole pot in one day. 
somebody's riding my ass, I don't brake check them because that's dangerous. What I like to do is hit the windshield wiper fluid, that way it flies back and hits them and lets them know they're way too fucking close. Or I like to give them a thumbs down as they pass by me because it hurts a little bit more than just flipping them off. And if you ever get into your car and it's just way too hot because it's been sitting in the sun, the quickest way to cool it off is to roll down one side window and with the other side just pump the hot air out. It takes less than a minute. If you're driving in an area with a lot of stoplights, usually most of those lights are programmed to where if you're going the exact speed limit, you'll only hit greens. Speed limit's 40 right now, so I'll go 40. There's one, two, three. I even got the green arrow. So I just started my period and it got me thinking, how the hell did women of the past deal with this? Because they didn't have pads or tampons or mydol or menstruation crustaceans. Like, how did they do it? So I did some digging and it turns out a lot of ancient cultures just tried to use paper to absorb the blood. It was the ancient Greeks that took a small piece of wood, covered it in lint, and used that to plug it up. It was Native Americans that used a mixture of moss and buffalo skin to make the world's first natural pad. During the medieval times, a lot of women used this makeshift rag underwear, but it wasn't like a disposable thing, you know? Like, you were on the rag, you had your rag. It wasn't until the mid-1800s that the sanitary apron was introduced, which was this rubber sheet that ran in between your legs to stop the blood from getting on your clothes. It was actually World War I nurses that paved the way for the first sanitary napkin. In 1931, tampons were invented, and I thought it was a modern trend, but the menstrual cup was invented in the 1930s. But then questions around virginity started happening, so people leaned more into pads, and in the 60s, they added the adhesive strip. Is your school spying on you? I'd put money down and say that your school gave you a laptop to use for your studies. If so, open up Google Chrome on your computer and type in chrome colon slash slash policy. This is going to allow you to see what your admin, aka your school, has allowed on the device. If you open it up and there's nothing there, that is a good sign. But if some policies actually pop up, you're gonna wanna click these link out buttons to see what the policies actually mean. When you click on that, if there's anything related to video capture allowed or screen record allowed, your school is watching everything you do. I'd recommend covering that webcam up. Here are some things that happened this week that I think more people should know about. Cartoon Network has decided to merge with Warner Brothers Studios, and in doing this, they have already fired over 80 Cartoon Network employees. And considering the fact that Warner Brothers has really only put their energy into reboots, I think it's safe to say that the original cartoons that we're used to getting from Cartoon Network aren't going to happen anymore. You know, stuff like Adventure Time, Regular Show, Amazing World of Gumball, Craig of the Creek. This is so sad because they literally just celebrated their 30th birthday. What's gonna happen to Adult Swim? Netflix just announced for $6.99 a month, you can watch their movies and TV shows with ads in 720p of all options. Not to shit on my old employer or anything, but that is literally what the original cost to rent DVDs from Netflix used to be. I don't think anybody wants to pay money to just watch ads anyway, and it's weird that they think we do. Mark Zuckerberg's metaverse that he put $1.2 billion into just came out with a report that shows that they only have 38 active users! But hey, at least they finally added legs, am I right? I can't think of a better way to spend $1.2 billion than to give half a school bus full of people legs in a fake universe. So they call this the one minute health check. All you gotta do is take a spoon and rub it all over your tongue. And then you put the spoon in a bag and then place it under some light for about a minute. And you're technically healthy if you pick back up the spoon and it's clean, no blotches or odor. But if it does smell kind of sharp, there could be an issue with your stomach. If it has orange blotches or smells like ammonia, there's problems with your kidneys. And if it smells sweet, you might be a diabetic. If there's any white blotches, that could mean a respiratory infection. If there's any yellow blotches, that could mean an issue in your thyroids. And if the blotches are purple, you should get your cholesterol checked. All hail Dr. Spoon. So I got a puppy yesterday. Everybody meet Nova. Nova, meet everybody. I can't tell if Astro likes her or just kind of tolerates. <laughs> she can't get up on the couch by herself. She needs a little like, Big butt push. There we go. But then she just scratches the fuck out of it with these big ass bean toes. Look at those tiny little nails. And these tiny little teeth. Crazy in a couple weeks, she's gonna turn into this shit. Look at these giant chompers. She has the prettiest eyes you 
ever, dude. See, look at that. He's been pretty good about potty training, except for the not once, but twice she's peed on the floor. I don't know who allowed me to just get two of them, but I did. <laughs> Next time you go to make a sandwich, try putting two pieces of bread into the same toaster slot. That way the outside is all toasted while the inside is still soft and chewy. And instead of just slapping the lunch meat onto the bread, try cutting it into these half circles instead. That way there's less overlap and you actually get some meat on the corners. And when you go to grate cheese, make sure the grater is horizontal. There's way less mess this way. Look at all that. Yo. I don't know if it's the bread or my hands, but this looks so small. Don't forget to give your dog the excess cheese. They'll thank you for it. Here's some of the coolest websites that you need to know about. Emulatorgames.online This website has a bunch of the old consoles, and let's say you wanted to play a Nintendo DS game. They have all of the options right here to play right on the website. Woof.net this website gives you the opportunity to travel the world in exchange for volunteer work in the agriculture space. Like, let's say I want to go to Portugal. I wouldn't have to pay for housing or food. I would just have to work for it. OnlineSequencer.net It's this website where you can make insane pieces of music for free! Yeah! This has got to be the most perfect example of just because you can! Doesn't mean you should. They made little nanobots that help sperm reach the egg. And for infertility issues, okay, I kind of get this, but you have to think about the kind of person you're creating by doing this. It's either going to be the stupidest kid you've ever met or the laziest. Don't you think that the poor mobility of the sperm is an indicator of poor genetic quality? Like we all had to win a race and this guy just gets valet for jizz. Did you know that the way you sleep can tell a lot about your personality? The fetal position. Many people, including myself, sleep this way because it offers a sense of safety. Those who favor curling up like a baby tend to be really sensitive but project a tough exterior. The log. Sleep specialists say that if this is your favorite way to sleep, you're probably really easygoing, social, and relatively trusting of others. The yearner. This is similar to log sleepers in the sense that you have a really open nature, but you're more cynical and not as gullible. The Soldier. If you sleep on your back with your arms to your sides, you're more likely to wake up refreshed. You hold yourself to high standards, and when asked, you probably say that you sleep this way due to medical benefits. Except, your snoring probably annoys people. The Free Faller. This is the worst position to sleep in, but if you prefer, you're more likely bold and highly sociable, but you don't have the thickest skin when it comes to taking criticism. The Starfish. You're known to be more selfless, even though everybody kind of thinks you're a bed hog. The pillow hugger. You like to be cozy and cuddle, and you hold high value to close personal bonds, and you cherish your relationships over everything else. The thinker. If you sleep on your side with one hand under your chin so it looks like you're lost in contemplative thoughts, it signals that you have high emotions. You live life on an emotional roller coaster, and it keeps the people around you on their toes. The stargazer. This is one of the least popular sleeping positions because it's one of the most vulnerable. If you sleep like this, you're really happy, easygoing, and sure of who you are. Fully covered. If you sleep completely under the blankets 100% of the time, you're afraid of taking risks and getting hurt. One foot out. People who sleep like this want one thing and one thing only, and that's comfort in all aspects of their life. Head over the edge. This sleeping position is tied with people who want to escape their day-to-day -day life and desperately want change. It also causes a lot of headaches. Here's some new movies being made that I am so excited for. Avatar The Last Airbender is continuing the story with the first ever animated movie that is coming out in 2025. I don't know if I can wait that long, but Nickelodeon is saying they're working on a whole Avatar universe, so hopefully we get a lot of content very soon. Mufasa is getting his own Lion 
King movie. Aaron Pierre is gonna be playing Mufasa. And we have Seth Rogen and Billy Eigner as Timon and Pumbaa. From what we know, it looks like it's gonna be a prequel or like flashback to Mufasa when he was a young lion cub. It's supposed to come out in 2024. I feel like Disney's just trying to make his death all that more traumatic for us, but I'm curious, would you prefer this to be in 2D animation or 3D? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse 2, but it might also be called Across the Spider-Verse Part 1, which means we might get a third one? The cast for this looks insane. I don't know about y'all, but I consider the first one to be like the best Spider-Man movie of all time, so just be ready for 2023. I see so many videos about me saying that I'm way too loud, tons of comments being like, Jayus, why are you yelling at me? And I don't even like mean to. I don't think I'm that loud. Let's test it. I'm gonna light my hair on fire, one sec. I gotta make sure I'm not too like breathy with it. Like I wanna make sure it's actually the volume of the screen doing it. Ah, ah. Okay, bud, so this is the challenge that I saw on TikTok, but I don't even think it'll be that much of a challenge for you because look how long your legs are. You can do this. I have some treats. Come on. Come on. Where are you going? Come on. What if I lower it just like a little bit? Surely now you realize you can step over. Come on. Come on. Look at those ankles. It's blo- Come on. Oh my goodness. Astro, you're embarrassing me in front of the entire internet. Okay, what if we just lower it a little, a little bit more? Come get the treat. Come get the treat. Come on. Fuck. You're not getting underneath this. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Yes. Today is National Girlfriend Day, and even though I have a boyfriend, they're non-binary, so I think it's perfectly acceptable for me to try and do something cute for them. So I have a pen, and I have paper, and I'm gonna write this motherfucker a love letter. I think it needs to be more than that. I'm very bad at expressing what's going on up here, but I have to try. We got a draft. Eh, another draft. How do I tell this person that I just love them so much? Do you guys have any ideas? I think they're working out their own thing. Okay, I think I got a final draft here. I just have to put it on nicer paper and like write neater. I did it and they're on their way. Do I just like give it to them? Like if I don't have any perfume, would it be weird to spray some Febreze on it? <laughs> Why on earth would I cut my- I did it. <laughs> it's been about two years. I think it's time for a change. Did you think I was gonna actually shave my head? I'm not insane, why would I do- Did it. I'm just kidding. This is obviously a filter. I didn't shave my head. I did get a haircut though. What do you think? In case my last post didn't piss you off enough, I got another one for you. Iran's parliament just voted 227 to 63 in favor of executing all 15,000 protesters that they arrested. In case you weren't aware, there have been massive protests going on in Iran. And the reason for that is the country's morality police have been murdering women who violate the hijab laws, most notably Masa Amini. The country even turned off the internet in an attempt to get people to stop talking about it, but it really only made the protests grow. Women all over have been taking off their hijabs to show their hair because they believe that having the choice to do so is a human right. But the government has decided that it's going to execute every single person that they've been able to apprehend. Little extra thing in their law though is that they can't execute female prisoners that are virgins. So they're going to violate them before killing them to prevent them from going to heaven. I don't know what to do outside of just spreading the message about this, but yeah, this is what's going on in the world right now. Hey, you, you have a crush on somebody? Yeah, okay. Do you want them to like you back? Yes, of course. Never say these things. Don't ask them why they don't or why they rarely reply to you, okay? People got things to do. If they don't text back, it doesn't mean they don't like you, but they definitely won't like you if you look all needy and shit. Don't bring up your ex or even worse, their ex. They're not in the picture anymore. Why are you talking about them? Don't tell them who they should and shouldn't be with, okay? You have a crush on this person, but they might go on a date with somebody else. Don't tell them that that person sucks. 
You suck! Don't tell them that you stalk their social media, okay? We all know everybody does it, but bringing it up is weird. Don't! Don't ask them if they like you more than everybody else, because then they're gonna have to sit there and think about who they know, and you might not be the coolest one! Let me know if I should make a video on things that you should say. Humans have stripes. All of us, our genetics are coded for our skin to be covered head to toe in stripes. They're called Blaschko lines and they're invisible on most of us, but they are there, they do exist. But some people actually have a genetic mutation that makes it to where their stripes are visible to our naked eye. It's believed that Blaschko lines can become visible under UV light, meaning that some animals like birds and bees can see our stripes. And even though you might not be able to see it on yourself, your stripes are completely unique to you and the patterns these things can create are insane. I genuinely feel sorry for Ken in the B movie. You're telling me if a bee stole your girlfriend and then gaslit you into thinking you were crazy, you wouldn't do the same thing? I don't agree with Syndrome's methods of violence and kidnapping a baby, but his message of if everybody's super, then nobody is, isn't wrong. You would think Pixar would want to spread the message of, oh, you can be special too if you work hard enough, but instead they just say some people are born special and some people aren't. If you try to fight against that, you're just jealous. Otto from Wally isn't really a villain. He's just an AI following his programming. Protect humans. Don't let them go back to Earth. Like, finding this plant isn't proof that this planet is habitable. One plant out of the trillion tons of garbage and rooting for them to go back? Like, the planet is just starting to heal itself and I don't think the cannibalistic milkshake drinking bitches learned the errors of their ways. Hey, do you have any chapstick? Uh, no, I don't. But I learned in this survival book that you can just use the grease around your nose as a substitute. You mean the grease? Oh my god. Oh man, I just jumped in the pool. I got water stuck in my ears. Oh yeah, same thing happened to me. Just uh, tilt the ear that's more full, like down towards the ground. Now jump, but land on your heels with your knees locked. How the hell? Hey. What? Before I leave, do you want anything from the store? I had the music on way too loud and my ears are ringing. What? I swear to God. Take your palms, put them on your ears, and then with your fingers, tap the back of your skull. I don't understand how that worked. <coughs> it's so gross, I burp all the time. Yeah, it's a sign that your body's just really low on stomach acid. You should try like eating your food slower or drinking some apple cider vinegar. Oh my God, I love chewing on ice. Just, oh, I could do it all day long. No, you're probably low on iron, right? Like go eat a steak or some spinach. Oh, my fingernails have like white spots on them. What do you, what do you think that means? Oh, that's a hundred percent a zinc deficiency. It'd be more like meat and dairy and nuts. So I was trying to talk to some of my family about the whole Roe v. Wade situation and they think I'm crazy. They're calling me crazy because I think it's reasonable to say that everybody should have a right to control and choose what happens to their body. I personally think it's crazy that politicians think they know what's better for your life more than you do, what's better for your health more than your doctors do. I think it's crazy that when my grandma was my age, she had more rights than me 50 years later. It's insane to me that some people care more about a potential life than actual lives being lived. The only way to defend our rights is by taking action, and that starts with talking to your friends, family, and elected officials about this issue and emphasize how important it is to you, because if wanting bodily autonomy for everybody is crazy, call me crazy, I don't care. So it's been a whole month since I quit smoking. I'm 23. I started smoking when I was 12, so this is the biggest change that I've ever made in my life. Week one was hell. I had this constant headache, no appetite, and I was just irritable to everything going on around me. Week two somehow got worse. I had this excruciating pain going on in my ribs and I was just having these really weird nightmares and the only thing good that came out of it was my dad decided to quit smoking too. Week three, I actually started to feel better. Like this is something I could actually do until I relapsed and smoked a tiny joint that I found to help me stop crying and go to sleep because I just had an awful day. I felt really guilty about doing that until I talked to my sister and she was like, you just went three weeks without it. You're doing good. Keep pushing. So that's the mentality I have with it now. I haven't touched it since and we just passed week four. So hopefully me just being honest with my story can help somebody out there start or continue theirs. So yeah, I appreciate all the support. 
Here's some secrets that hotels do not want you to know about. Everything at a hotel is negotiable as long as you're not rude. They're willing to do this because they think you'll leave a good review. Don't use the glass cups in your room. There are so many maid stories of them saying that they just use the same rag from the bathroom to make it look clean. Most maid staffs don't have a whole lot of time to clean each room. They usually just end up fixing the sheets and pillows, but they don't change anything unless it's the end of the week or if there's a visible stain. If you want a deep clean in your room, tip your maid. The best time to book a hotel is ASAP because prices always tend to go up, but if you're trying to book a hotel room at night, it's definitely gonna be more expensive than trying to book it during the day because that's when most people are trying to get a room. And if you're booking online, make sure you clear your history after comparing prices for a little bit because websites will raise the prices if they see you're looking at their page for too long. So I learned from the Snoop Dogg cookbook that orange chicken is made with orange juice. Just gonna throw a couple of cups of that in there. Six tablespoons of soy sauce, but low sodium, so I don't have a fucking heart attack. Two tablespoons of some off-brand sriracha. Two teaspoons sesame oil. And then two tablespoons of honey. Did you know my dad was a beekeeper? I'm not sure how to measure pepper flakes. Heat this up until it yickings. We got Liv cutting an ungodly amount of chicken. You don't sense it. I'm going to take these eggs and fry. We're gonna do three cups of cornstarch. Oh God. Ah. Now we're gonna put the chicken and the egg and the flour into this pan, which I will heat up with this canola oil. I'm gonna slowly add chicken and add sauce and add chicken and sauce. Also making rice. I am so fucking excited. Oh, it's so hot. Oh! I'm going to bubble. Next time. I can help you out to it. It's unreal. You know me. Mm -hmm. That's been really good. So, what sauce just makes everything taste so good? It tastes like. What? Where's chicken? Here's some survival tips that I've heard on this app that would actually just get you killed. If a bear is ever chasing you, just run downhill because bears can't run downhill. You can barely run downhill. I think whoever started this just wanted to see their friend get mauled by a bear because like bears can run downhill at a shocking speed. If you have out lost somewhere, be sure to ration your water. That way it'll last you longer. Lost hikers have been found with plenty of water on them because they decided to ration it, got dehydrated, and didn't realize it. So just drink your water when you're thirsty, even if it only lasts like a couple of hours. It's gonna keep your mind and body working. If you're ever out lost in the extreme cold, just drink some alcohol to warm you up. Alcohol actually lowers your body temperature. You feel warmer because your blood vessels are dilating, but this is just making you lose more heat. You're more likely to die from hypothermia. My dad was a beekeeper, so here are some of the honey hacks that I know. Next time you get a pimple, take some raw, unfiltered honey and put it on it and then cover it with a band-aid overnight. By the time you wake up, it'll be completely gone. And if you do this honey mask consistently, if you have any acne scars, those will start to disappear too. If you wanna take care of some split ends, you can put a little bit of honey on them or a mixture of honey, coconut oil, honey, olive oil, put it on the split ends, you'll wake up in the morning, they'll be so smooth and moisturized. A Little bit of honey can also be a cure for some chapped lips and make it easy I haven't tried it, that's just what I've heard. If you ever have to measure out honey, put some oil inside the measuring cup. That way when you put the honey in, it won't stick to it and it'll just fall right out. Honey doesn't go bad, so if it ever hardens up on you, just put it in some boiling water, it'll soften right up. Here's some really weird ancient games that our ancestors used to play. Not mine, but somebody's. Rich Victorians had this one called Find the Poo. If somebody was designated to take a shit, hide it in like a vase or something, and put that vase somewhere in the house for the rest of the party to find. Classic. Ancient Greek women used to play this game called Lysistrata, where they would collectively withhold sex from men, most notably with powerful men during times of war. And they would do so until peace negotiations would happen. Little game of power where a sex strike literally saved lives. So King Philip V of Spain invented this game called the Imperturbable that became really popular in 18th century France. A bunch of men would sit at a table but be completely naked from the bottom down. A woman would go underneath the table and go down on one of the men. And the object of the game was to guess who was getting off and you won if you could finish without anybody noticing. I forgot that this happened. I got a man fired from his job once and I forgot that this happened. I'm gonna tell you guys, 
cautionary tale. My first car, bless her soul, I got her for like $1,500 and she lasted like eight months. So now I'm 20 years old in the market for a car, researching cars endlessly until I narrow it down to three. I know I want one of these three. I just gotta test drive and figure out which one I like the most. I go to Toyota, test drive a car, cool. I go to Honda, test drive a car, cool. I go to Kia, a man walks up to me, he's like, hi, and I'm like, hello. He's like, what would you like? I was like, I would like to test drive this car. And he's like, no. What do you mean? Oh, you can look, but you can't touch. I can't touch the car? Not until you buy it, which is really confusing because I've been touching cars all day and I haven't bought one yet. I said, fuck that, left, but came back the next day with my dad because I wanted to test something, just a little theory I had. I stay in the car, my dad gets out, goes, walks up to the same car salesman and is like, hello. And he's like, hi. And he's like, I would like to test drive this car and this little man is like yes sir of course yes let me go get the keys for you this guy comes back from getting the keys to find that my dad is no longer there and it's just me because i'm the one buying the car he's not interested he doesn't want to test drive i want it to me hi can i do that this man's brain glitched whole mood switches he's back to no touching penis touch only woman no touch his manager then walks up and is like what is going on and i couldn't just not tell him what was going on so that's a story of how i bought a honda civic and got somebody fired oh brother make sure you do those dishes like i asked i am don't give me back talk give me your phone Hey, go take the trash out. You got it, mom. You can count on me. Go take the trash out to the dumpster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, did somebody spill? That's okay, sweetie. Look, I got a towel. Go clean it up. I didn't spill it. What is with this back talk from you? You know, I'm keeping your phone for another week. If you're ever walking around and you feel like somebody's following you, just slow down. Okay, you're probably just a little bit paranoid, but there are a couple things you can do to help you get you out of the situation. First of which is to pick up the pace, okay? If this person is following you, they're gonna speed up too. If they have started speeding up with you and you're wearing a hoodie, okay, tuck the hoodie into your shirt and if you're wearing a ponytail, take the ponytail out. This is gonna stop them from just like grabbing you. Also make sure you don't just walk home, you know? Why are you leading this person to your house? Instead, make a right turn and then make another right turn and another right turn and another right turn. You're gonna make a full circle. If this person has made a full circle with you, it's time to start panicking. You got a few options, okay? The most dangerous of which is to turn around and make direct eye contact with them. This will probably throw them off and they might leave you alone. Second of which is to wave to the first random person that you see, pretend that you know them. They'll probably leave you alone now that they think you're not alone. Or you could walk to a police or fire station because I doubt they'll follow you in there. Here's some insane history facts that I don't think school even considered teaching you. In the year 2000, an art show in Denmark showed off 10 fully functional blenders with a live goldfish inside each one. Visitors were given the option to press the on button with the idea that nobody would actually do it. Until somebody did. They pushed that button and blended two goldfish just out in the open. In 2011, an Australian bartender found a glitch in his bank's ATM system and it allowed him to withdraw more money than he actually had the balance for. And for four months, this guy went on a bender of parties, private jets, and paying off his friend's student loans. He spent $1.6 million before being caught. Burger King once ran a promotion called the Whopper Sacrifice, where they would give anybody a free Whopper as long as they deleted 10 friends off Facebook. It was a huge success until Facebook shut it down because so many people were complaining about the fact that they got deleted for a sandwich. It has officially been three years since I got fired from Best Buy and Psychology Tricks blew the fuck up on this app and so much has happened since, you know? I got TikTok famous, I got canceled, I blew up again, I got canceled again and again and again. And because of all that, I decided to address everything. Like, everything. All of the reasons people hate me. I felt like it was something that I needed to do in order to progress mentally. And the response so far 
is not what I expected. I feel like it's because more YouTube people are watching it than TikTok people, so if you haven't seen it yet, I would recommend you go watch it. I am gonna take a little bit of a break now, though. I've been working on this video for so long. Now that it's finally finished, my body has relaxed, and I'm starting to feel like I'm getting sick. Just for a few days, though, might post some drafts, but I wanna say thank you to every single one of you that has helped me build out this platform to over 20 million people. Like, what? I want as many people to watch this video as possible, so if you could like, comment, share, maybe even repost, that'd be really cool. I can't wait to see where the next three years takes us, guys. Did you know that the number one place people get abducted is grocery store parking lots? This is why as soon as you get in your car, you just need to start it and drive off. Don't just sit here scrolling on your phone. You make yourself super vulnerable to anybody that's willing to take the chance to get to you. Everybody should have pepper spray or one of these keychain weapons, but most people don't. But if you're a woman, I'd put money down that you know about the whole like holding your keys in your hand like your Wolverine or something. But you should try to remember to keep the keys in your non-dominant hand. Because your dominant hand is going to be the one that you're able to punch the hardest with. But now at least your non-dominant hand has some extra attack points. If you ever just out walking alone and a guy stops you to ask where you're going, do not tell him you're going home. From my own personal experience, they end up just following you. Instead, say you're going to your boyfriend's place because guys will respect the hypothetical presence of a man more so than you asking him to leave you alone. How much of different foods and drinks would it take for you to consume before it kills you? Well, it would only take about 14 glasses of water before your kidneys were just like, <laughs> Nobody's ever done it before, but about 480 bananas would have enough potassium to just stop your heart. If you eat cherries, you know that sometimes you accidentally eat the pit, but it would only take three pits for you to die from cyanide poisoning. It would only take 24 tablespoons of salt from Mother Nature to be like, yeah, this person has had way too much sodium. If you were somehow able to take 14 shots of whiskey within an hour and not puke, <laughs> don't. Is this why I have a boyfriend and you don't? It's not like I can help it. You can completely get rid of your gag reflex if you just squeeze your left thumb in your fist. Why do you have a boner? We're in Spanish class. Por que estas mirando? Okay, to get it to go away, you can try pushing your feet into the floor. It's gonna redirect the blood away from that area to your thighs instead. Se me fue la dirección. Gracias. What's wrong with you? I'm constipated. Have you tried rocking back and forth? Yes, it's not working. Well, this one's kind of for emergencies. And I don't know what gender you are, but if you're a girl, you can stick some fingers up there and push it out. If you're a guy, you can do the same thing by just pushing on your pain. I'm literally never asking you for advice ever again. If you're ever overthinking, like your brain is just running at a million miles an hour, you're juggling all these things that you know you're supposed to do, and you're replaying every embarrassing thing you've ever said, and you want that to stop, just keep your eyeballs still. In order for your brain to think and fetch memories, okay, there needs to be movement in your eyes, and if you consciously stop that movement, the racing of the mind will stop. And if you notice that you're still having this like overwhelming feeling of negative emotion, one long time meditation trick is to just lean your head back and have your eyes stare directly up, making sure that they're still, still, but this will actually change your brain waves and activate a feeling of relief and calmness. And if neither of these things work for you and you still have a lot of like nervous energy, try sticking your head in a bowl of water. This is gonna trigger what's called the diving reflex, which will lower your heart rate and immediately cause the chain reaction to get rid of any anxiousness in your body. Body hacks that I know work, because I use them. It's getting really hot out there. Like, ridiculously hot. So here's some hacks to stay cool this summer. During the day, try to make sure that all your windows and curtains are closed. You might not think that this makes much of a difference, but my AC bill says otherwise. If you're fancy enough to have a fan, you can force it to blow really cold air by just getting a bowl of ice and placing that in front of it. And if you're really just overheating, the best way to get your body temperature down quick is to run water over your wrists because this is where your veins are closest to the surface. And if that doesn't work, you can always just stick some ice up here. The loudest word ever shouted was quiet. It is impossible to speak while breathing through your nose. Don't try it. Don't do it. What are you doing? I just said you can't do it. What are you doing? Getting angry when you hear other people breathing is called misophonia and it's actually a brain disorder.
Sometimes I wish I was a man, but not because I want to be a dude, okay? Gross. I really, I really just want your guys' 24-hour cycle instead of this 28-day one. Because last week, I was great, okay, on top of the world. But because I'm on day 17 of 28, means my estrogen has gone, and my progesterone's gone, woo! So I feel like jello right now. I don't want to work out. I really just want to cry, but it's not even like PMS week, which means it's only going to get worse from here. Imagine waking up every day, though, and feeling the fucking same. I don't think guys understand that it's not the same for... I just... Ah! Ugh, I keep sweating through all of my shirts like I put deodorant on every morning. What is going on? Not all deodorants are antiperspirant. Some are just made for smell and you really should be putting it on at night. At night? Dude, I've had the hiccups for like three days now. No. No shit. Plug your ears. Wh why? And drink this. What? Drink? This! Are they gone? Okay, I want to talk to them about it. Like, I really do. But I, I don't think I can without crying. Well, I mean, you can practice forcing yourself not to cry. You just have to focus on your breathing and blinking. And if worse comes to worse, you can just pinch the bridge of your nose and it'll block your tear ducts. Why hasn't anybody told me this before? As somebody who has 11 siblings, here are some of the best parenting hacks I know. Learn to say thank you when they do something good and I'm sorry when you eventually make a mistake. I promise you, you're gonna gain a whole lot more respect from them than the whole I'm the parent, you're the child routine. Take a Sharpie and write your phone number on the inside of their shoe. That way if they ever get lost, somebody has a way to contact you. If you're taking them to someplace like a water park where they're not gonna be wearing shoes, get like a temporary tattoo with your phone number instead. Experiences are better then things. Be careful with your phrasing. If you ask your kid if they want a hot dog for dinner, they have the option to say no. Instead, ask them what they want on their hot dog for dinner, giving them the illusion of choice. Tell your kid right from the start that if they don't brush their teeth well enough, they're gonna fall out. That way, when their baby teeth start coming out, you'd be like, ah, oh, well, you just didn't brush good enough. They're gonna take care of those adult teeth. examples of civil disobedience is in 1979 Sweden classified homosexuality as an illness and in protest the people of Sweden would call in to work saying they couldn't come in today they were feeling gay I have two great dames okay Astro and Nova Mr. Astro butt doesn't have his balls anymore and he had to get a gastroplexy because great danes are susceptible to bloat both surgeries happened at the same time, and it costed about $3,000, which I thought was fine because I had pet insurance with Pets Best. <laughs> they sent me back $65. It didn't even cover his pain meds. Nova here, when she was just a little baby puppy, ended up overeating because she got into her brother's food and actually got bloat. She tried to throw it up, which didn't work. She just inhaled this vomit, which caused a lung infection, and she got pneumonia and had to spend five days in the animal hospital. Picking up a $7,000 vet bill, which sucked to put on my credit card, but I had Pets Best, who guaranteed a 90% reimbursement. <laughs> they didn't even notify me that the claim was finished. I had to call and ask what's up, and they were like, oh yeah, we're not paying for any of that. Reason they gave me for him was that it was a non-emergency surgery, and the reason they gave me for her was because of a waiting period for medical emergencies. So I ended up paying about $10,000 out of pocket, plus $3,000 to Pets Best Insurance, which doesn't make sense because they're not insurancing. And I, would, I just would have saved so much money and heartbreak by never getting their insurance in the first place and just paying out of pocket, you know? And I, I've messaged other people who have like worked with Pets Best and they're like, yeah, wait a minute, all my claims never seem to go through. So I genuinely think this company is scamming people. Please don't give them your money. If anybody out here has actually good pet insurance, please let me know because the, I feel like they're gonna need it. You know, Great Danes, they always have like issues. I need it. Help, please. If you're ever choking and you're alone and you just know that there's gonna be nobody around to help you, 
you need to get on your hands and knees and then just drop your body to the floor. <clears throat> the sudden push of air is gonna push any food out of your throat. If you're ever trying to defend yourself against an attacker and you have a, uh, a knife, okay? Instead of trying to like poke them places, slash them across the forehead. It's going to bleed so much, effectively blinding them. If somebody ever tries to smother you with a pillow in your sleep, just turn your head ever so slightly until you find the air pocket to breathe. Granted, this person's probably gonna continue trying to kill you, but at least it won't be something as stupid as a pillow. Everybody experiences time differently. There's actually two different ways that people say they perceive it, and to figure out which one you are, you just have to answer this question, okay? If I say the meeting on Wednesday got pushed forward by two days, what day is the meeting? If you said that the meeting is now on Monday, you have a time moving perspective. But if you said that the meeting is now on Friday, you have an ego moving perspective. An ego moving perspective means that you see yourself moving forward through time, like sitting on a chair, rolling forward. The time moving perspective means that you see yourself as stagnant and time is moving forward through you, like pulling the chair towards you on a rope. It's kind of crazy to think about, but some couples share all their passwords with each other because they trust each other completely and other couples don't for the same exact reason. We'd probably save a lot more on car insurance if they'd stop making all those commercials. Only the poorest rich people fly first class. I'm just saying, no flat earthers seem to live towards the edge of the earth. The cheapest drug around is sleep deprivation. Ah! <laughs> this is a little quick PSA to all those who like a clean shaven feeling look down there. If you shave all of the hair around your donut hole, you won't be able to fart silently anymore. I know it can be kind of hard to recognize it when you're in the thick of it, but here are some signs your mental health is getting worse. You're losing interest in things that used to make you really happy. Your sleep schedule isn't a schedule at all. Life is overwhelming, yes, but it seems like lately every minor inconvenience is just too much to handle. You don't have any impulse control, you're just reacting off your first gut instinct. You're having a really hard time staying grounded. Life seems to be happening a lot up here, like through your eyes, rather than experiencing it throughout your whole body. And if you relate to any of these things, I can make a part two on how to start to get yourself back, but I do recommend reaching out to somebody you love and opening up a little bit. So I was curious about which country has the happiest people, and it turns out that the World Population Review actually keeps track of this. In last place, we have Afghanistan, with an overall happiness rating of a 2.5 out of 10. And then we have countries like Zimbabwe, Yemen, and India, with scores around 3.1 to 3.8. The United States is in 19th place with a 6.9 out of 10. I feel like we have Stockholm Syndrome or something. The UK is in 17th place with a 7.06, followed by Costa Rica. In 15th place, we have Ireland, Canada, Germany, and Australia, and they're all in the 7.1 to 7.18 range. Austria is in 10th place with a 7.2, and the top five happiest countries are the Netherlands, Iceland, Switzerland, Denmark, and in first place is Finland with a 7.8. They say they're happy because they're free, have mutual trust, high wages, and their government isn't corrupt. Here are some scientifically proven ways to improve your mental health. First thing when you wake up in the morning, avoid looking at your cell phone. Bake your fucking bed instead. Drink a goddamn glass of water. You're human. You need it. And write all of your intentions for the day down. Meditate, even if it's just for 10 fucking minutes. Stretch, work out, just move your body in some way. Go for a walk, get some sunshine on your face, especially if your job is indoors looking at a screen. Throughout the day, it's about rewiring your brain. Practice thinking positively, prioritizing yourself while still remaining compassionate towards others. And at the end of the day, make sure you write down everything you're grateful for. Self-love is not easy or even a linear process, but over time, it'll get better. Next time you're talking to your crush and the conversation gets kind of boring or even a little bit awkward, just ask them what they would do if money wasn't a part of the equation. The conversation is going to get much deeper than just asking them what their sign is or something. You could also just pretend that there's something stuck in your eye. Okay, it hurts really bad. You need their help. Depending on the height difference, they're going to be looking up at you trying to figure out what's wrong. You're going to be looking down at them or vice versa. All you got to do is smile and they're going to be like, 
what? And you gotta be like, I really just like you looking up or down at me. If you say it's smoother, they'll get butterflies. You could also just ask your crush what their favorite movie is. And no matter what their answer is, just be like, oh, I've never seen it. And if they're like, ooh, we should watch it sometime, they like you. But if they're like, oh yeah, you should watch it sometime. You know, you can actually tell if you're in a good relationship by just these five things. You don't get bored around them. like. Ever, even on those days when you're doing literally nothing. If you're able to joke around about a recent fight you guys had, that is a good sign because it shows there's no built up resentment over it. If you guys are starting to pick up on each other's mannerisms and way of speaking, this is a scientifically proven signal that y'all are in love. Being around them doesn't drain you or your social battery. Instead, it actually seems to charge you up. There's no holiday coming up, but you start getting them little things that you know they'll like anyway. Maybe their favorite drink, some snacks, random flowers. My boyfriend will just bring me t-shirts that they found and they end up being my favorite. 